and welcome back to Bull Dodge, presented by Mad Lax California. Check out their website at www.madlax.com forward slash California. I'm Ryan Heidrich alongside my good friend Kazmir Murawski. And with the NFL season officially over, it's time for some lacrosse. And our mailbag is full, so let's get right to it. First question comes from Richard in Virginia. He asks, the MCLA was in full swing last weekend. What are your thoughts on the games? One game that we were both really excited for last week was the Stanford-UCSB game, and that game didn't disappoint at all. Uh, Stanford, Stanford ended up coming out on top 12-11 over the Gauchos, and they were led by freshman midfielder Peter Doyle, who had five goals. Um, he's from St. Ignatius in San Francisco, a West Coast kid. Um, and the Cardinal defense held C.J. Jacobs to a goal, which was very interesting. Yeah, the, the Stanford holding C.J. Jacobs just to one goal is a, tr- a strong test to how good that defense really is, and maybe it's a defense that's good enough to push Stanford kind of over the hump. Another action that we were really interested in watching was Boston College heading down to Florida for a tilt versus the Florida State Seminoles. And Boston College actually won 14-13 in overtime, which is a big win for the Eagles' early season road game. Joey Volk scored with 50 seconds left to send, send the game to overtime, and the Eagles didn't look back, scored in the first overtime period for the win. Yeah, definitely. That was an awesome game. And uh, in other notable games, Aiden Kennedy helped lead uh, USD to a win over Loyola Marymount, 11-9. Um, and without the Cole brothers, Fullerton lost to SDSU, 14-2. And to wrap up our trip around the scoreboard, Texas A&M dropped two games this weekend, one to the University of North Texas and the other to Sam Houston State. Simon Fraser really put the beat down on the University of Washington 27-4, and St. Mary's continues its WCLL success by being the University of Pacific 19-3. So the second, it's the second week of the MCLA season, which means there's a new poll out. Any thoughts or surprises about the poll? Well, my biggest surprise was Stanford um, not moving into the top 10. I mean, they beat a top 5 team in UCSB, and I thought it was really surprising that they're not in the top 10. They're currently ranked 14th in the poll. And um, I see them being a top 10 team. Exactly. With no one else having games played, you thought, I thought that they would jump a lot higher as well. Uh, I was also surprised by the Texas Tech receiving two votes in the poll. You know, they are 0-3 on the year, so it's, it's pretty alarming that they're stealing votes from someone else who may be more deserving. Yeah, definitely. And our next mailbag question comes from Matt in California. Some hot MCLA action is going on this weekend. What games are you guys... Well, I'm going to have to look at it, the MCLA Division II and St. Mary's. You know, they travel down to Southern California this weekend for two huge games, two huge games early in the season. They play Concordia University as well as Cal State Fullerton. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how St. Mary's does. They made a trip to Greenville last year. They were bounced in the first round, but I know that they're a program trying to take the next step, and I think these two games will go a long way in kind of telling everyone how they're going to do this year. Yeah, definitely. And similar to St. Mary's, UCSB has two games this weekend. Uh, they take on Cal Poly Slow on Saturday and uh, University of California on Sunday. And it should be interesting to see um, how the Gauchos bounce back after, um, after losing to Stanford uh, and taking on two very good WCLL teams. Yeah, that's a big test for the Gauchos coming off a loss. I'm also interested in seeing Grand Canyon as they make their SLC Division I appearance uh, against San Diego State. And our next mailbag question comes from Josh in Maryland. He wants to know who we pick to win each conference in NCAA lacrosse. Well, we both picked the defending champion Loyola Greyhounds uh, in the ECAC. I think with our balanced attack, it just should be too much for the other ECAC teams. Yeah, and in the Big East, we see Notre Dame winning that conference. With John Kemp's leadership and maturity between the pipes, their defense will be too stout, and they shouldn't have any problem winning the Big East. And with Will Manny returning for UMass, it's bad news for everyone else in the Colonial League. Um, you, we see UMass winning the Colonial League as well. Yeah, and we also have Colgate winning the Patriot League. Peter Baum's too good for them not to, so I think that they, they walk away easily with the Patriot League championship. Yeah, and we both disagree on the ACC and Ivy League. For the ACC, I have Duke winning. I think that with Dan R- Wigreiser in goal and uh, potent, potent offense, I think Duke is poised to win the ACC. And I see Princeton running away with the Ivy League this year. Yeah, well, I think that Duke's, Duke's offense will be good. I think Maryland's actually the better team in the ACC, top to bottom. And I think their depth will really prove to be a success uh, late on in the, later on in the season. And in the Ivy League, I have Cornell winning that, that league. You know, I think with the return of Rob Pinnell, I think that's too much. 
And I, I see Cornell coming out on top. Yeah, and our next mailbag question comes from um, Bob in Illinois. Uh, first NCAA action happened last weekend when Delaware took on High Point. Any thoughts? Well, I was really impressed with High Point. You know, it's their first ever NCAA lacrosse game. And for them to come out and play a tough Blue Hens team and only, only drop the game by two points, you know, I thought it was a great success for them. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with, uh, with what John Torpe and his staff has done over there at High Point. Um, in just a few years is incredible. And it should be exciting to see what they have, they have in store down the road. Exactly. Right on the Delaware side, I was actually really impressed with their balance offense. You know, they had four guys score two goals each, and it proves, NCAA lacrosse has proven that if you have a balanced attack, you win more games. And so I think that the Blue Hens will continue their winning ways later on in the year. Next mailbag question comes from Tom in California. He asks, how does the Nikki Galasso injury affect Syracuse? Well, I think it's a big blow to the Orange, um, who are looking, definitely looking forward to having the UNC transfer on the field in 2013. Um, but I think that the Orange are going to be fine with a, lot of off, uh, with a lot of talent on the offensive end this year. I think the Orange men will be just fine. Yeah, I feel bad for Nicky Glosso. You know, he was a highly touted recruit coming out of West Islip. You know, maybe the highest touted recruit ever. So for him to have such a slow and poor start to his college career must be devastating for him. But on the side of Syracuse, you know, I think it's definitely going to hurt their offense production. Mainly on EMO where Glosso can kind of do it all. He can feed very well. He can shoot well. He's kind of that perfect man-up guy that kind of can do anything for you. And, and our next mailbag question comes from Stan in Iowa. Yes, what's the deal with the conference realignment in Division One? You know, if there's one bad thing about the expansion of lacrosse, it's, it's the effect that it has on the conferences. You know, with more teams adding lacrosse, conferences are trying to get the best teams in there in their conference, so they're adding all these teams, which causes a lot of confusion for fans as well as teams who are constantly playing new people on their schedule and new people coming up on their schedule. It's, it's tough for both, both parties. Yeah, the realignment is definitely hard to follow. Um, the ACC C will uh, add powerhouses, Syracuse and Notre Dame in the future, uh, which should make the ACC even tougher than it is already. Yeah, and there was actually a rumor floating around this week that we both read on the Baltimore Sun talking about how John Hopkins might join the Big East, and I think that that would be, uh, would be a mistake for the Blue Jays. You know, they, they play an independent schedule right now, much like Notre Dame does in football, and I think that they should stay that way. You know, they, they get so much attention on ESPNU. They're the most televised national program, and so I think that moving to the Big East could affect that, and I think it could actually be bad for the program. Yeah, well, that's all the time that we have t for today. For you guys watching the game, enjoy the rest of the game. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm Kazimir Murawski. And I'm Ryan Heydrich. Keep watching.